So if you see someone reaching over to press it for you, that's what that's about. All right, so uh, let's get started. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the uh, Purdue University Serious Security Seminar Series. Uh, today is my uh, great pleasure to introduce Professor Ravi Sandhu from George Mason University. Uh, Professor Sandhu earned his bachelor and uh, master's degree from uh, IIT Bombay and Delhi, respectively, and his master's and PhD degrees from Rutgers University. He's a fellow of ACM and IEEE, and he was the recipient of the IEEE Computer Society Technical Achievement Award. Uh, his research has focused on information security, privacy, and trust, with special emphasis on models, protocols, and mechanisms. His doctoral work on safety and expressive power of access control was further developed by him, culminating in the type access matrix in 1992. Uh, in collaboration with Professor Jodia, he analyzed and reconciled confidentiality and integrity in multi-level secure databases. In 1993, he showed that the uh, Chinese wall uh, uh, separation of duty policies were instances of information flow. Uh, in 1996, uh, along with industry colleagues, he published a seminal paper on role-based access control. Uh, which evolved into the 2004 uh, NIST-NC standard uh, RBAC model. Uh, in 2002, with his student, uh, he introduced the usage control model for next generation access. Uh, Ravi has published over 160 technical papers on information security <coughs> and has received over 30 research grants and has graduated 12 PhD in its career. Uh, Ravi is the founding editor of the Synergy Lecture Series on Information Security, Privacy, and Trust. Earlier, he was the founding editor-in-chief of the ACN Transactions on Inter uh, Information and System Security, TSEC, uh, from 1997 to 2004. Uh, he was a chairman of ACN SIGSEC from uh, 1995 to 2003, and founded and led the ACN CCS and ACN SECMAC conferences to high reputation uh, and prestige. Uh, Ravi is also an, an inventor on uh, eight security uh, technology patents, and he has over 15 patents pending. Uh, he's also the principal architect of the master and PhD programs in information security and assurance at George Mason University. So uh, please join me in welcoming uh, Professor Sandu. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dongyan, first of all, for uh, arranging this visit and for this very nice uh, introduction. It's been a busy day. I've met a lot of uh, people, some old friends and some new friends, I hope. And uh, it's been uh, interesting, and I hope uh, we can conclude with an interesting lecture. So this, uh, uh, really, there are three themes that uh, kind of bring together in this uh, line of work. The first one is a security problem that uh, we can call secure information sharing. I'm going to abbreviate it as IS in uh, some of the forthcoming slides. Uh, I guess the secure part of it is uh, assumed. Uh, <laughs> why would you want to do it if it's not secure? And uh, uh, in the DOD, it's uh, also known as assured information sharing somehow. Uh, that's a preferred term in the DoD community, and it's a very simple problem uh, to describe. Uh, the two quotes here, uh, share but protect. So you need to share information, but you also need to protect it. And that's really, uh, you know, from the very beginning of uh, computer security, that's been, uh, it was at the root of discretionary access control, if you will. And uh, in that sense, it's the mother of all security problems. So, uh, we will speak more about it uh, in a moment. There is this uh, second theme of trusted computing, which I will be abbreviating as TC as we go along. Uh, this is a technology which has been developed by many of the big players in the computer industry, uh, Intel, HP, Microsoft, IBM, 
to name a few, uh, and a whole lot of other participants. Uh, it tries to address the problem of securing your keys. We can encrypt stuff on the client machine or on a server machine, but what do we do with the encryption keys? Now we can encrypt those again, but what do we do with those encryption keys? So very soon you realize there's a you know, basic problem here. And trusted computing, one aspect of it is the trusted platform module, which says uh, the root keys, eventually you've got to sort of end this chain somewhere, and the root keys in that chain will be protected in a separate processor called the trusted platform module. So you will have some level of hardware protection as opposed to just software protection for it. And the second aspect of trusted computing says that uh, not only will we protect the keys, but we'll also increase the level of uh, memory protection and so on currently provided on uh, CPUs. For example, this is just one example of the things that they have uh, tried to fix in trusted computing. Uh, direct memory access allows uh, device drivers to pretty much write to any area of memory. Memory protection is turned off for direct memory access. And we all know that direct memory access is a requirement to do I.O. efficiently. So uh, they have injected uh, some degree of memory protection uh, so that DMA cannot bypass it. And that's just one example of the kind of problem they have tried to fix uh, in uh, existing uh, architecture. So that's trusted computing. It is something that's kind of driven by industry. There's been very little uh, academic uh, involvement with it. And so it's a little bit unfamiliar to uh, most, academ uh, most of academia. And uh, nevertheless, it's an important industry initiative. And it tries to bring together cryptographic techniques and access control techniques to solve a real world problem of uh, trying to secure stuff on a machine. And then the third uh, theme is that of uh, uh, a way of thinking about security problems. Uh, there are two aspects to it. There's a layered approach of thinking in terms of policy, enforcement, and implementation layers, and I will talk about that uh, during the talk. And then there's a new kind of way of thinking about access control, which we call usage control, uh, which was published uh, starting 2002, but the journal paper appeared 2004. So it's a relatively recent uh, effort, both of these things have come out of uh, my group at uh, GMU. So this talk is going to try and bring all these three things together in some uh, way. Of course, each of these three would be of interest by itself, uh, even without the other two. But here we are trying to bring all three together. Uh, and it is a work in progress. So, uh, so uh, quick overview of what is trusted computing. Uh, well, the first uh, uh, statement is that you cannot uh, achieve uh, assurance uh, using software alone. You have to have some hardware mechanisms on which uh, you base uh, your uh, security and assurance. Okay, at the sort of very simple level, you have to have sort of two user two modes of execution: a kernel mode and a user mode. Otherwise. The user mode can, you cannot protect the kernel from the user mode. So uh, that's, that's just one manifestation of this principle. And uh, certainly this uh, desire to provide assurance for computing on a, a platform goes back a long way. Uh, the moment uh, we had more than one user executing or more than one program executing on a computer, we had this need uh, to make sure they don't interfere with each other. And we've had a long history of technology in this arena, and I'm not even going to try and summarize it. Uh, in some sense, it culminated in the Orange Book, uh, which tried to uh, you know, inject military-style uh, military labels and focus on confidentiality as the main objective. So I'm not going to review that here. I just assume uh, people have some background in that area. And uh, what's new about uh, trusted computing